what are the behavioral tools that one can start to think about in terms of ways to modulate these, uh, you know, basically the way that DNA is, is being expressed and functioning. I've heard you talk before about hormesis of other sorts, cold exposure. Uh, we talked about fasting. We talked about exercise in broad terms, but what about any evidence, if it exists, as to whether or not aerobic training versus weight training, these sorts of things. In other words, what are the sorts of things that people can do to improve the sirtuin pathway? And I, I realize that there are caveats. We can't go directly from a behavior to sirtuins, but in the general theme, what can people do? What do you do? Well, we know that, that aerobic exercise in mice and rats raises their NAD levels and, and their levels of sirt one of the genes goes up uh, to actually number one and number three. What we don't know yet is what type of exercise is optimal to get them to change. We will learn, we're doing work, now it's revealed that we're doing work with the military in the US to try and understand that kind of thing. And I'll always tell you and the public when I don't know something, I'm not gonna extrapolate. But what do I do? I, I base my exercise on the scientific literature, which has shown that maintaining muscle mass is very important for a number of reasons. The two main ones are uh, you want to maintain your hormone levels. I'm a, an older male losing my testosterone and muscle mass over time. And by exercising, I will maintain that and have body like this since I was 20. So that's one of the, the benefits of having this lifestyle. Sorry to interrupt you. You know, uh, we did an episode on hormones and there are data in humans that show that there are some males in their 80s and 90s where their testosterone is equivalent to the average of 25 and 30 year olds. I can get you that information. It is really impressive studies. Um, unfortunately, they didn't include a lot of information about the lifestyle factors, et cetera. But this idea that testosterone goes down with age, it might be the trend, but it's not necessarily a prerequisite. Right, I, I believe in, in naturally increasing and maintaining these hormone levels. And I've been measuring them for a long time. And I could see, for me, my testosterone levels were steadily, levels were going down. And then you got tenure and they went back up again. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> I actually became complacent and uh, it was the worst. Actually, my age changed in the wrong direction after that because I was relaxed Interesting. and not worried about the future. But then I got serious and I actually, according to the Inside Tracker al algorithm, got my age down from 58 to 31, a matter of months. So that, that was a big drop and I've, I've been getting steadily younger over the last 10 years, according to that measurement, the blood test. What about estrogen? Because women are different in the sense that they do uh, the number of eggs that they and the ovaries change over time, right? Uh, do you think that they can maintain estrogen levels at, in uh, over longer periods of time using some of these same protocols? Well, yeah, I get into trouble from a certain university when I talk about this too much. About estrogen? Just about fertility and long story. That I, I don't want to get too much into the anecdotes, but I'll tell you the science, which is if you take a, a mouse and put it on fasting or caloric restriction for up until the point where it should be infertile. So that's about it. At a year of age, a mouse gets infertile, female mouse. Due to, due to fasting? Or no, due, due to, to simply to aging? Due to aging. Okay. Due to aging. The fasting, it's it's not an extreme fast. It's just less calories. Got it. Then you put them back on a regular food and they become fertile again for a, many, many months afterwards. So the effect on slowing down aging is also on the reproductive system. And so that, I wouldn't say to any woman, I wouldn't think that they should become super skinny to try and preserve fertility. That's not what I'm saying. But these pathways that we work on, these sirtuins, are known to delay infertility in female animals. Case in point, I'm one of the lead authors on a paper where we used NMN. Remember, this is the gas, the fuel, the petrol for the sirtuins. We gave old mice, uh, one group of mice was 16 months old. Remember, they became infertile at 12. Gave them NMN and I think it was only six weeks later, they had offspring. They became fertile again, which goes against biology, a textbook biology, which is that female mammals run out of eggs. Turns out that's not true you can rejuvenate the female reproductive system and even get them to come out of mouse as we call it. So that's a whole new paradigm in biology as well. 